In this video, we're going to be finishing the Dividing Rational Expressions Worksheet on the CUDA software website under the Infinite Algebra 1 section. Picking up where we left off with number 17. Remember, when dividing by a rational, we're going to be multiplying by that reciprocal. So we'll have b squared minus 2b minus 15 over 8b plus 20 times 4b plus 10 over 2. So you can see that I flipped that fraction and multiplied as opposed to dividing. These separate expressions are equivalent. So now let's simplify. Starting by simplifying the numerator of my first fraction, I'll see what two numbers multiply to give me negative 15 and add to give me negative 2. So the factors of 15 that will work will be 3 and 5, where the 5 is negative. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, and 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So rewriting that quadratic in factored form as b plus 3 times b minus 5, and then that's going to be all over 8b plus 20. However, for 8b plus 20, I'm going to be pulling out a 4 from each of the terms. So that would be 4 times 2b plus 5 because 4 times 2b is 8b, and 4 times 5 is 20. So that fraction will be multiplied by, I can also simplify 4b plus 10 by pulling out a 2. And when I pull out a 2, I'll get 2b plus 5 within those parentheses, which is the same quantity as 2b plus 5 in my denominator, which will help me when simplifying. And that's because 2 times 2b is 4b, and 2 times 5 is 10. So that's all divided by 2. Now, let's cancel out to simplify. I have 2b plus 5 in the numerator, 2b plus 5 in the denominator, I have 2 in the numerator, and I have 2 in the denominator. So remaining in my numerator, when I multiply it out, I'll have b plus 3 times b minus 5, and in my denominator, all I have is 4. So b plus 3 times b minus 5 over 4 is my solution in number 17. In number 18, we're going to start by simplifying as we rewrite. So 10b squared plus 42b plus 36, I'll start by pulling out a 2 from each of those terms. So that will leave me with 5b squared, since 2 times 5b squared is 10b squared, plus 21b since 2 times 21b is 42b, plus 18, and that's all over. Now I'll pull out a 2 from my denominator. So that'll be 2 times 3b squared, since 2 times 3b squared is 6b squared, minus b, since 2 times b is 2b, and then minus 30, since 2 times 30 is 60. And that will get multiplied by the reciprocal of this fraction, however, I'm going to simplify it as I go along. So there's nothing I can pull out from 3b squared, 13b, or 10, so I'll rewrite that as 3b squared minus 13b plus 10. And that's all over, looking at my numerator, which is now my denominator, I'll be able to pull out an 8. Pulling out an 8 will leave me with 5b plus 6, because 8 times 5b is 40b, and 8 times 6 is 48. Now that I've rewrote some of these fractions, I can simplify, but only a little bit. I know that 2 divided by 2 is 1, so those 2's will cancel out. And you can see that there's nothing else that I can cross out. So now I'm going to have to start factoring each of the quadratics. And I'm going to need to factor by grouping. So let's start by rewriting that numerator in my first fraction. 5b squared plus 21b plus 18 I'm going to need to see what multiplies to give me a times c, which is 5 times 18, and 5 times 18 is 90, but it adds to give me 21. And that's going to be 6 and 15, where both the 6 and 15 are positive. So I'm going to rewrite 5b squared plus 21b plus 18 as 5b squared plus 15b plus 6b plus 18. And I wrote it that way so that I can factor by grouping. So I'll group my first two terms together and I'll group my second two terms together. 
Now let's do the same in the denominator. I need to see what two numbers multiply to give me a times c, which is 3 times negative 30, which will equal negative 90, but add to give me b, which is negative 1. And the factors that will work for negative 90 will be 9 and 10, where the 10 is negative, because 9 times negative 10 is negative 90, and 9 minus 10 is negative 1. So rewriting my b term as 9b plus negative 10b, rewriting that quadratic, I'll have 3b squared plus 9b plus negative 10b minus 30. So again, what I'm doing when factoring by grouping, I'm just rewriting that middle b term so that I can group. So you can see that 15b and 6b do indeed equal 21. And if you're confused on factoring by grouping, please refer back to a previous worksheet where I go more in depth, essentially explaining things in further detail. So that will get multiplied by, now I'm going to have to do factoring by grouping to my numerator of my other fraction. So that's 3b squared minus 13b plus 10. So a times c will be 3 times 10, which is 30, and it needs to add to give me b, which is negative 13. So that will be 10 and 3, where both 10 and 3 are negative, because negative times negative is a positive, and negative 3 plus negative 10 is negative 13. So rewriting that numerator as 3b squared minus 3b plus negative 10b plus 10, that will be all over 8 times 5b plus 6. And now I'll group my first two terms together and my last two terms together. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to erase everything that I've written on this right-hand side, which is just showing you how I break up or how I determine what numbers will become my new b values. So erasing that so I can continue my work, I will now factor. 5b squared plus 15b, looking at my first numerator and the first grouping, I'll pull out a 5 from each of those terms. But not just a 5, I'll pull out a 5b. So pulling out a 5b from the first grouping, I'll get b plus 3. And then pulling out a 6 from the second grouping of my numerator, I'll get b plus 3 as well. Which is what I want when factoring by grouping. Looking at my denominator, pulling out a 3b, I'll get b plus 3, and then looking at that second grouping, pulling out a negative 10, I'll get b plus 3. So that will be multiplied by, looking at the numerator of my second fraction, pulling out a 3b, I'll get b minus 1, and then pulling out a negative 10, I'll also get b minus 1, and that's all over my denominator of 8 times 5b plus 6. Now let's simplify. Now I'll be able to group 5b and 6 together because b plus 3 and b plus 3 are the same term. So I'll have 5b plus 6 times b plus 3 in my numerator, and that's all over grouping 3b with negative 10, and multiplying that by b plus 3, that will be 3b minus 10 times b plus 3. So that's my simplified or factored form of my first fraction. But now, let's simplify that second fraction. Grouping together 3b and negative 10, since I have b minus 1, I'll have 3b minus 10 times b minus 1, and that's all over 8 times 5b plus 6. Now look at everything I get to simplify. I have b plus 3 in both my numerator and denominator, so those will cancel out. I have 5b plus 6 in my numerator and 5b plus 6 in my denominator, so those will cancel out. And then lastly, I have 3b minus 10 in both my denominator and numerator, so those will cancel out. And that will leave me with b minus 1 in my numerator and 8 in my denominator. So my solution in number 18 is b minus 1 all over 8. So we took this original expression and simplified it to b minus 1 over 8. So I know that one was a lot of work because we had to utilize factor by grouping three separate times. 
However, practice makes perfect, so if you are confused at any point on factoring by grouping, refer back to the previous worksheet and complete a couple of those practice problems before attempting this one. But for now, let's continue on to number 19. Number 19 is going to be a little simpler because we don't have to factor by grouping. However, I'm going to simplify it as we go along. So looking at this numerator of our first fraction, I can pull out an 8 from each of the terms. So I'll have 8 times 2x minus 7 because 8 times 2x is 16x and 8 times 7 is 56. And that's all over 8. And that will get multiplied by flipping the second fraction, 4 over, now simplifying our new denominator, I can pull out a 4 from each of those terms to get 2x minus 7 because 4 times 2x is 8x and 4 times 7 is 28. Now look at all I have to simplify. 8 divided by 8 is 1, 2x minus 7 divided by 2x minus 7 is 1, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. So essentially I have 1 times 1 times 1 which is equivalent to 1. So 1 is my solution and number 19. So this expression, 16x minus 56 over 8, divided by 8x minus 28 over 4, equals 1. Now, moving on to number 20, I can tell just by looking at our quadratics that we're going to have to factor by grouping. So now that we've practiced with number 18, as a little refresher, hopefully number 20 will be easier. So 10x squared minus 28x plus 16, I'm going to simplify at the start. I can pull out a 2 from each of these terms. So pulling out that 2, I'll have 5x squared minus 14x plus 8 within my parentheses. So if I was to redistribute the 2, I'd get 10x squared minus 28x plus 16. Now for my denominator, I'm also going to pull out a 2. So that will leave me with x minus 2 within my parentheses. And that fraction will get multiplied by the reciprocal of this other fraction. Now I cannot pull out a common term from the denominator, so I'll rewrite that as 5x squared minus 41x plus 8. And in my numerator, there's not a common term, so I'm going to rewrite that as well, but this time in my denominator. So 25x squared minus 25x plus 4. Now there is at least one thing I can simplify, and that's the fact that 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. So now let's start that factoring by grouping. In this first numerator, I have a times c, that's going to be 5 times 8, which is 40. So I need to see what two numbers multiply to give me positive 40 and add to give me negative 14. And those numbers will be negative 4 and negative 10 because negative 4 plus negative 10 is negative 14 and negative 4 times negative 10 is positive 40. So rewriting that first numerator, changing that b, or that middle term, to 5x squared plus negative 4x plus negative 10x plus positive 8, that's going to be all over x minus 2. And that will get multiplied by, now let's rewrite the numerator of my second fraction. I need to see what two numbers multiply to give me a times c, which is 5 times 8, which is equivalent to 40, but add to give me negative 41. And that's going to be a negative 1 and a negative 40 because negative 1 times negative 40 is a positive 40 but negative 1 plus negative 40 is a negative 41. So we'll have 5x squared minus 1x plus negative 40x plus 8. And that's all over. Finally, looking at my last denominator, I need to see what two numbers multiply to give me 25 times 4, which is 100, but add to give me negative 25. And that's going to be 5 and 20, where both the 5 and 20 are negative. So I'll have 25x squared minus 5x plus negative 20x plus 4. Now, just like I did in number 18, I'm going to erase this work so I have more room for the problem. So make sure you have this written down if necessary. Now I'm going to group my first two terms together and my last two terms together in each of those fractions. So grouping my first two terms and my last two terms. So looking at that numerator in my first fraction, I'll start by pulling out an x. 
Pulling out an x from the first grouping in my numerator, I'll have 5x minus 4 within those parentheses because x times 5x is 5x squared plus x times negative 4, which is plus negative 4x. And then in my second grouping, I'll pull out a negative 2 so that I get 5x minus 4 within the parentheses again. Because negative 2 times 5x is negative 10x, and negative 2 times negative 4 will be that positive 8. And that's all over x minus 2. So that will get multiplied by pulling on an x from the first grouping in my numerator of my other fraction. I'll get 5x minus 1. And then pulling out a negative 8, I'll get 5x minus 1 again within those parentheses. And then now looking at my denominator, that first grouping, I'll pull out a 5x to get 5x minus 1. And then in my second grouping, I'll pull out a negative 4 to get 5x minus 1 again. So now simplifying, I can group together my x and my negative 2, since I have 5x minus 4 and 5x minus 4, I'll be able to group together my x and negative 8, since I have 5x minus 1 and 5x minus 1. And then I'll be able to group together 5x and negative 4, because I have 5x minus 1 and 5x minus 1. So I'll have x minus 2 times 5x minus 4 all over x minus 2 as my first fraction, and that will get multiplied by x minus 8 times 5x minus 1 all over 5x minus 4 times 5x minus 1. Now look at everything we'll be able to cancel out. x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 is 1. 5x minus 4 divided by 5x minus 4 is 1. And 5x minus 1 divided by 5x minus 1 is 1. Therefore, we have x minus 8 remaining in our numerator, and all of that is multiplied by 1. So x minus 8 is our solution for our expression in number 20. So all of this is equivalent to x minus 8. Let's continue on to number 21. In number 21, simplifying as I go along, I can pull out a 3 from each of my terms in my numerator of my first fraction. So that will be 2p plus 9, because 3 times 2p is 6p, and 3 times 9 is 27. And that's divided by, and I can pull out an 18, but not just an 18, I can pull out an 18p from each of my terms in the denominator of my first fraction. So that will be p plus 2, because 18p times p is 18p squared, and 18p times 2 is 36p. So that will get multiplied to the reciprocal of our second fraction, which I'm going to simplify as I rewrite. So pulling out a 2 from that denominator, which is now in my numerator, I'll have 2 times p plus 2, since 2 times p is 2p, and 2 times 2 is 4, and that's going to be all over 16p plus 72, but I'm going to pull out an 8 from each of those terms. So pulling out an 8, 16p will now be 2p, and 72 will now be 9, because 8 times 2p is 16p, and 8 times 9 is 72. So simplifying this fraction by canceling out my terms, I have 2p plus 9 in my numerator, and 2p plus 9 in my denominator. I also have p plus 2 in my numerator, and p plus 2 in my denominator. So you can see that I'll have 3 times 2 all over 18p times 8. However, I'm going to simplify even further because 3 and 18 are both divisible by 3 and 2 and 8 are both divisible by 2. So I'll have 3 times 2 all over rewriting 18 in terms of 3. That's 3 times 6. That's still multiplied by p and then rewriting 8 in terms of 2. That's 2 times 8. 4. So you can see that 3 will cancel out with 3, and 2 will cancel out with 2. So in my numerator, I'll have 1, and in my denominator, I'll have 6p times 4, which is 24p. So 1 over 24p is my solution in number 21. And again, that's because my numerator equals 1, 
when I cancel out my terms, and then I have 6p times 4 left in my denominator, which equals 24p. Now lastly in this video, we're going to be going over number 22. And again, we're going to be factoring by grouping. However, we're only going to have to do it twice, as opposed to three times, like in numbers 18 and 20. So starting off by simplifying that first term, we're going to see what two numbers multiply to give us 3 times negative 18, which is a negative 54, but add to give us our b term of negative 25. So here is a times c, and here is b, and that's going to be 2 and 27, where the 27 is negative. 2 times negative 27 is negative 54, and 2 plus negative 27 is negative 25. So that will be 3x squared plus 2x minus, or plus a negative, 27x minus 18. That is rewriting our numerator, making negative 25x as 2x plus negative 27x. And that's going to be all over. Now looking at our denominator, we'll be able to pull out a common term, and that's going to be 9. 9 goes into 27 three times, so we'll have 9 times 3x plus, and 9 goes into 18 twice. So that's 9 times 3x plus 2. And that will get multiplied by the reciprocal of the divided fraction. But we're going to be factoring by grouping. So we're going to see what two numbers multiplied to give us a times c, which is 5 times 18, which is 90, but add to give us negative 33. And that is going to be 3 and 30, where both the 3 and 30 are negative. Negative 3 times negative 30 is positive 90, and negative 3 plus negative 30 is a negative 33. So I'll rewrite that as 5x squared minus 3x plus negative 30x plus 18. And that's all over 5x minus 3, and we cannot simplify 5x minus 3, so I'll leave it as that. Now let's group. Grouping the first two terms and last two terms together, in both numerators of my fractions, I'll be able to pull out a common term, and for our first numerator in our first group, that's going to be x. So pulling out an x, I'll get 3x plus 2, and then in the second grouping, I'll pull out a negative 9. So pulling out a negative 9, I'll get 3x plus 2 again. Since negative 9 times 3x is negative 27x, and negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. And that's all over 9 times 3x plus 2. Now, looking at the next fraction, that first grouping, I'll be able to pull out an x. So I'll be x times 5x minus 3. And then looking at that second grouping, we'll be able to pull out a negative 6. So that will be 5x minus 3 again. And that's all over 5x minus 3. So now I'll be able to add x and negative 9 together, or x minus 9, because they're both multiplied by 3x plus 2. And in my second fraction, I'll be able to add together x and negative 6, or write it as x minus 6, because both of those are multiplied by the quantity 5x minus 3. So I'll have x minus 9 times 3x plus 2, and that's all over 9 times 3x plus 2. And then for my second fraction, I'll have x minus 6 times 5x minus 3, and that's all over 5x minus 3. And now we simplify. 3x plus 2 will cancel out with 3x plus 2. 5x minus 3 will cancel out with 5x minus 3 to leave us with x minus 9 times x minus 6 all over 9. That is our final solution on this worksheet, x minus 9 times x minus 6 all over 9. And that is the simplified expression of number 22. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.